Well, we've talked about how proteins that are to be packaged for secretion end up inside the RER. Proteins that end up in peroxisomes, in lysosomes, also go through this process. Earlier I showed you how cells are sugar-coated, why oligosaccharides are only on the external surface of cells and not on the cytoplasmic surface, and that some proteins produced by ribosomes on the RER don't actually go all the way into the lumen, but become membrane proteins. Proteins that are destined to stay in a membrane, transmembrane proteins, contain something called a stop transfer sequence. Now there are many different versions of this sequence, the stop transfer sequence, because it's not necessary that it be a very particular sequence. All that's really necessary is the stop transfer sequence be very hydrophobic, so that it in fact is trapped in the phospholipid bilayer interacting with the fatty acid tails of the phospholipids. That stop transfer sequence leaves this polypeptide shown on the right embedded in the membrane. If you remember how integral membrane proteins are structured, they have a strong helical region of hydrophobic amino acids that interact within the hydrophobic component of the phospholipid bilayer. Well, that's a stop transfer sequence, and here we see it in a cartoon form. Remember also that there were transmembrane proteins that actually crossed the membrane more than two or three or even four or five or six or seven times. Here we have an integral membrane protein that's crossed the membrane twice. It had two stop transfer sequences that, as the polypeptide grew, resulted in hydrophilic components facing either inside or outside the cell, but the hydrophobic stop transfer sequence ended up being buried in the phospholipid bilayer. And you could have this protein loop in and out of the membrane as it is being translated by a ribosome more than a few times, each time leaving behind a stop transfer sequence in the membrane.